Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and we have the second installment of the Ryzen 9000 series today with the launch of the Ryzen 9 9950X, the 16 core flagship and the 12 core 9900X. Now these CPUs are hot off the heels of the Ryzen 5 9600X and the 9700X which were the CPUs part uh, part of the initial launch last week and unfortunately it didn't quite go according to plan they were quite disappointing in a number of areas now outside of games performance was pretty good in some situations photo, uh, photo editing for example and in a few other areas that I don't particularly cover here on the channel I mainly focus on content creation with a few games thrown in as well but in general, they were pretty disappointing. So the efficiency was pretty good in terms of multi-threaded workloads. The Ryzen 7 9700X, for example, drew a lot less power and got a little bit of an extra bump in performance in those multi-threaded workloads such as Cinebench, for example. But outside of content creation, they were pretty disappointing. And we're talking here, of course, in games where they offered incremental increases at best and other websites such as Hardware Unboxed who um, just have a bit more manpower actually found that they weren't that efficient in games either when it came to power consumption. So yeah, it wasn't a great, um, a great situation for AMD and there's a bit of confusion about what these CPUs are. Are they aimed at gamers? Because that's certainly the way the AMD slides had them pointing. Um, or are they just general purpose CPUs? Um, what are they upgrades for? Are they upgrades for some of the lower power models that existed in the 7000 series? Or are they, as their name suggests, uh, pre uh, successors to the 7600X and the 7700X? So I think a lot of conversation has gone on over the last week since these launched. And I just wanted to add my two cents worth to the whole thing. And I think the problem that we have is that we have been spoiled by AMD. I'm not excusing any of its antics here whatsoever, but Obviously, if you go all the way back to Ryzen 1000, uh, well, if we just talk about the Ryzen series in general, there's been usually been a pretty good argument for upgrading from one generation to another. And I think that's been the case all the way through uh, the Ryzen launches that we've seen. That hasn't been the case elsewhere with Intel, for example. You wouldn't have wanted to upgrade it from the 13th gen to 14th gen CPUs. You wouldn't have wanted to upgrade from 10th to 11th gen. Uh, going all the way back as well, you know, uh, there's just a whole bunch of stuff when we just had those horrible incremental upgrades. No core count increases, just tiny increases in performance and that kind of stuff. So the problem with, as I mentioned, is that we've been spoiled with AMD, going all the way back to the 1000 series and the original Zen architecture that then moved to Zen Plus with the 2000 series. That was a good upgrade. You got a, I think it was an improved Infinity fabric, so lower latencies, we had higher frequencies and a smaller manufacturing process, I think, as well. It's going back quite a long way. But that was a decent upgrade. With the 3000 series, so moving from Zen Plus to Zen 2, huge upgrade you know absolutely massive and that was probably the biggest upgrade that we've seen uh, so far because we didn't just move from zen plus to zen 2 which had a huge increase in terms of ipc and performance we also moved from a, a an 8 core cap up to 12 and 16 cores with the ryzen 9 3900x and the 3950x so that's huge performance increase due to a whole bunch of reasons and then we moved on to the 5000 series and zen 3 Again, massive performance increase, not an increase in core count, but in terms of IPC, etc., and performance, we still saw massive gains and it was absolutely worth upgrading from either Ryzen 2000 or 3000 to 5000, I think. Not least of all, because at the end of that, as well as the 12 core and the 16 core, we got the 5800X3D with its 3D V-cache. And that was definitely worth upgrading from a mid-range uh, Ryzen uh, 5000 uh, or 3000 series CPU, but also from some of the lower end Ryzen 5000 series CPUs as well. So moving on to Ryzen 7000 and Zen 4, which was launched two years ago, the issue there was that we had very high DDR5 pricing and we also had uh, expensive motherboards. AMD obviously the first taking the leap to DDR5. And things were a little bit tricky but with those things. We also had, we were just getting over COVID and et cetera, et cetera, high graphics card prices. So all that stuff aside though, you would probably still consider an upgrade from a Ryzen 5000 series uh, CPU to the 7000 series. You know, the 99, sorry, 7950X was still uh, a lot faster than the 5950X, for example, in pretty much everything. So what's gone wrong this time is that all of those arguments for generational upgrades don't exist here. That, that's completely not the case with the Ryzen 9000 series. So 
that that is the problem with these CPUs, and that is why people are hating on them basically. Um, and I, I I completely agree because we've kind of been led to believe that they would offer those kind of bigger increases that we've come to rely on AMD in the past, and when they didn't do that. Um, and the graphs didn't look like it. I mean, I've been running benchmarks in, oh, nearly lost him. Uh, I've been running benchmarks in, in all sorts of things over the last couple of weeks, and um, they, they are generally a bit disappointing overall. Now, in certain situations, yeah, you do get, um, you, you can get better efficiency, but not everywhere. In fact, as I mentioned, games are actually less efficient. And just the out of the box performance is, is pretty lacking, really. So it's, it's a tricky one. Uh, because we want to give AMD the benefit of the doubt, and today we'll be looking at the two Ryzen 9s, which do have higher power limits, so that might improve things. Uh, we also have higher frequencies. Again, that should improve things. You'd hope that would. So we're going to be comparing uh, both the two not Ryzen 9s with the 5 and the 7s uh, that we looked, looked at last week, as well as everything else that we tested, uh, to see if we can make sense of the situation. Because what I don't think we've seen yet is kind of AMD's hand. I don't think we've kind of looked... We seen its kind of game plan here uh if we have then i think it was probably in the wrong with launching the ryzen 5 and the ryzen 7 first with the kind of fanfare that it that it gave with them i think that was probably a mistake and the consequences of that we've seen over the last week so anyway that's all kind of done and dusted i wanted to get my two cents in there um, about the new cpus and all that kind of stuff and i do kind of agree that the technology is kind of focused on the epic series of cpus and the servers and all that kind of stuff so that's that's in large part where the zen 5 architecture is sort of focusing but amd hasn't not been able to, to turn that into, de into decent desktop performance in the past so again that's something else that we're concerned with now Talking about pricing, because we haven't had the Ryzen 9 pricing yet, uh, it, we assumed that it was leaked a couple of, year, uh, couple of weeks ago. We cer that certainly seemed to tally with the Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 7. Unfortunately, the pricing wasn't entirely accurate. It's still good news because we are still seeing price drops from the launch pricing of the equivalent uh, Ryzen 9 series models of the previous generation. Um, the Ryzen 9 9900X is in line with that leaked pricing so it is going to retail for five hundred dollars and in the uk i've just had the uk pricing come through that is going to retail for 430 pounds so five hundred dollars in the us and 530 uh, 530 pounds apparently here in the uk now the 99 9950x is where things are a tad bit dis uh, disappointing because we're not seeing that hundred dollar climb down from the original um launch price of the ryzen uh nine 7950X, which was, if my uh, graph tells me correctly, $700, so $699. We were expecting that to drop to $599 in line with those pricing leaks. It didn't. It's only dropped to, uh, if I can just flick through my pricing here, $649. So we've only got a $50 climb down rather than the expected $100 climb, $100 climb down. So it's not the best news, but it's good news in terms of launch to launch pricing. The pricing coming down. The problem is that the Ryzen 7000 series is a lot cheaper in some cases and we're not really seeing the uplift in performance to justify spending significantly more than the Ryzen 7000 series. So this is another thing that AMD is going to have to watch because the previous generation has traditionally been its lower end CPUs. It hasn't had anything below six cores for a while I think on desktop. It's relied on the older stuff to actually buoy that up. Uh, but it can't really do that with the 7000 series because as of yet, the performance is pretty close in pretty much everything to the Ryzen 9000 series. So it's a tricky situation and it's going to get even trickier when the new X3D, uh, 3D vCache models come out, which we're expecting in the next maybe two or three months, maybe a bit longer. No firm date on that as, as yet. So that's going to put further pressure on anything that we've got here in terms of people buying it for gaming or even casual gamers, really. So uh, to further compound things, the Ryzen 7 7800X3D is still doing the rounds, as is the, uh, the, the two Ryzen 9 versions with 3D vCache. So 
It's, it is a very, very tricky situation. And the 7800X3D, I've seen lots of people on Facebook and everywhere else saying, right, well, the Zen 5 doesn't seem to offer that much gaming performance. The 3D Vcash models are still performing uh, way above it, even though they're from the older architecture. So I'm just gonna go with the current 3D Vcash model and I completely sympathize with you. So anyway, we need to kind of, draw, kind of draw a line under that and just get these benchmarks out, discuss them, see what we're dealing with, and then we can come to some conclusions at the end. And that is pretty much it for the introduction, other than to ask you to uh, subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications and don't forget to like and comment on this video as well just helps punch me through through the algorithm and helps me keep on running this channel and uh, just gets me noticed as well so and i always love hearing your comments about my videos and also on the four cpus that we've got here what do you think of them are you considering buying one of them today and um yeah what are your opinions on zen 5 versus zen 4 or are you waiting for 3d vcash models or have you splashed out on a 7800 x3d already love hearing your uh thoughts in the comments down below. So with the liking, subscribing and commenting out of the way, I'd like to thank AMD for sending over these CPUs here and for all the sponsors of my test hardware, etc, etc. And you can see all of that in the links down below as well. A lot of them are buy links. So if you click on those products, you will go through to um, one of various retailers and I just get a cut of those sales. So if you're after a new CPU or a new cooler or other hardware, motherboards, memory, that kind of stuff, I've listed a whole bunch of stuff that's really great for Ryzen 9000 in the description below. And if you want to know how to install Ryzen 9000 or 7000 series and you're coming from Socket AM4, don't forget to check out the banner up above because I've got an install guide to make sure you don't bend those very delicate socket pins. And you can see links to all this stuff in the description down below as well. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and let's crack on with the review. First up, we should talk about my test system, which uses an Asus ROG Strix X670E E gaming Wi-Fi, which has the latest BIOS. And also on that motherboard is 32 gigabytes of DDR5 6000 Corsair Vengeance Expo memory. Our graphics card of choice is an RTX 4090 and we also have a water cooling loop attached to the CPUs to remove any thermal bottlenecking. All my test systems were up to date as of early August 2024 with the latest Windows updates and Nvidia drivers. Now, first things first, we need to talk about a couple of things. First of all, the Intel microcode update has been released for its 13th and 14th gen CPUs. I haven't applied that here for the simple reason there wasn't enough time to retest everything, but also because that microcode update for those that have managed to test it out there has a negligible performance impact, at least on non-ASUS motherboards. So I have decided to leave it for now for the simple reason that I needed to eat and sleep as well. And there hasn't been much of either of those, either, either of those things going on over the last couple of days. So um, that's what it is. I just wanted absolute clarity there. Um, obviously, if you want to see the impact of the microcode update, you'll have to look elsewhere for now. Um, but the results do include the temporary fix that Intel offered by tweaking a few BIOS settings um, a couple of weeks ago. So that has been applied. The other thing we need to talk about is that I did seem to have a few problems with the Ryzen 9000 series this time around. So uh, for some reason, the Ryzen uh, 9 CPU seemed to have a slightly lower than expected performance in games. Uh, it wasn't by much, but it just seemed like something was happening that, that, that shouldn't be like, you know, they were faster, they were slower rather than the uh, the Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 7 that we got that we got last time. So tried a bit of tweaking. I managed to get them performing a little bit better, reinstalled Windows again. I swapped out all of my hardware to find out what the problem was. And then I found that actually the Ryzen 7000 series CPUs were underperforming a bit in games as well compared to where they were when I last tested them over a week ago for the previous launch. So something's weirds going on there. I've tried everything I possibly can. I've reinstalled Windows. I've you know, obviously reinstalled all the drivers, uh, swapped out every single bit of hardware to try and get that performance up, but it performed consistently at the level that you now see in the graph. So what I had to do is retest everything from AMD, uh, which took up a huge amount of time and I got the results that you now see in the graph. So all I can say is that the results are as uh, you would see from a fresh system um, using the very latest drivers and updates that I had uh, available to me at the time of testing. So again, take that at face value however, however you want to take it. Finally then, we have some benchmarks and we did see a fairly significant uplift with the Ryzen 9s in Counter-Strike 2. Uh, they were ba basically just trading blows with the two X3D CPUs and we would kind of expect, 
you know, this to be shining uh, the best light on uh, Zen 5 when it comes to what it's actually capable of on the desktop. But obviously these CPUs, much higher TDPs and able to hit higher frequencies across more cores. So the performance here is pretty good. I did rerun these numbers several times, as I mentioned, and uh, these are the numbers that I'm sticking with. And yeah, it's good to see the, uh, the, the two Ryzen 9s kind of trading blows with the X3D CPUs. But again, they don't convincingly beat them. Um, in fact, the two X3D CPUs from the 7000 series were faster either on minimum 99 percentiles or average frame rates or something like that. And the two X3D CPUs both faster on the, min the minimum 99 percentile of 1440p. So again, you wouldn't want to upgrade from an X3D CPU to any of the Ryzen 9000 series, but at least we're kind of getting near parity in gaming performance, at least in Counter-Strike 2. Next up is Cyberpunk and we have ultra settings with ray tracing enabled and we've also enabled DLSS because you know why wouldn't you if you had uh, an Nvidia GPU for example and we are looking at again some pretty good numbers but again the X3D chips do have the advantage here not by much uh, but you obviously you wouldn't upgrade from one of those because it would be a downgrade to the Ryzen 9 uh, 9000 series and uh, we are looking at the Ryzen 9 9900X being the next fastest CPU, basically. So it's faster than the Core i9 14900K, it's faster than the 7950X, etc, etc. So uh, a reasonable uplift, but again, I probably wouldn't want to upgrade from a Ryzen 7000 series CPU uh, to one of these ones. If you look further down the graph, we've got the 7950X on a minimum 99 percentile of 103 frames per second. It's only 114 for the uh, the best performing Ryzen 9000 here. Um, 1440p, pretty much the same result, except the uh, 9950X and the 9900X swap places, uh, but there's not that much difference between them. And again, we're not really seeing that much of an uplift over the previous generation. Next up is Microsoft Flight Simulator, and it was a pretty good showing for the uh, two Ryzen 9s here, uh, performing very, very well. But again, the 7800X3D came out on top, although they did manage to beat the Ryzen 9 7950X3D in here, which can be a little bit flaky when it comes to divvying out workloads across cores. It still was the best uh, or second best performing Ryzen 7000 series CPU, but uh, a reasonable uplift over the 7000 series here. Uh, we did see um, some uh, noticeable increases over the 7000 series, but again, would you upgrade based on these results alone? No, you probably wouldn't. Our next game test is Assassin's Creed Mirage, and uh, at both settings we have the Ryzen 9 9950X coming top and uh, unfortunately we do have quite a few CPUs sitting above it in the graphs, uh, namely the X3D cheap CPUs again, surprise surprise there, and uh, also some of Intel's um, CPUs with more cores do generally perform a little better. So uh, this game just likes lots of cores, lots of threads, high frequencies, that kind of stuff and uh, that's pretty much what we're seeing here and obviously you really wouldn't want to upgrade from a previous generation CPU either. Moving on to the multi-core test now then, and uh, it is an uplift, but it's not a massive uplift for the two Ryzen 9s. So at the top of the graph, we've got the 9950X, barely 100 points faster than the 7950X, so really uh, an incremental increase uh, at most. Um, but obviously we've got a similar situation with Intel's Core i9s. Now the 9900X, um, pretty much the same situation against the Ryzen 9 7900X, slightly more in percentage terms. It is... Um, over 100, uh, over 100 points, because but because it sits further down the graph, it does equate to more in percentage terms. But 1675 up to 1810 isn't massively impressive. Next, we have the DaVinci Resolve test, and we have um, fairly meager gains here again for AMD. So the Ryzen 9 9900X barely. Well, it's sort of 500 points or so, isn't it, compared to the 7900X. And uh, looking further down the graph at 9950X, which sits just behind, we have um, barely a 100-point difference. Well, not even a 100-point difference between it and the 79. Next up, we have Handbrake. And uh, I know there were some comments about the uh, Handbrake tests last time, uh, mainly due to AMD quoting much higher figures uh, for its CPUs versus Intel. Now, I think that's down to AVX512 being employed, but for some reason, I could not get that to work or replicate AMD's results here. So this is literally out of the box settings. I've uh, I even made sure that AVX512 was enabled manually in the BIOS. I plumbed in my usual video file, ran my usual benchmark, just um, the uh, fast uh, test basically in, hand, in handbrake, 
dropped in my file, clicked encode, got the time, and these are the results that you see. So I did try and get things to work how AMD said, but I think others have seen performance in handbrake um, a fair bit lower than what AMD was quoting as well. So out of the box, these numbers are how things perform. So moving on to Photoshop now, again, courtesy of Puget Systems. And we have a pretty interesting result at the top because all Ryzen 9000 series CPUs sit at the top of the graph. And interestingly, the Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 7 outperform the Ryzen 9s. Now, admittedly, compared to the Ryzen 5, it's not by much. In fact, it's barely 100, uh, 100 points, which is pretty much nothing in this test, probably within the margin of error. But the Ryzen 7 was just consistently um, a cut above at nearly 12,000 points. So I don't know whether that CPU is just able to hit slightly higher frequencies or it's responding quicker or something like that, lower latency maybe, uh, compared to the uh, the multi-CCD uh, models. But it's, yeah, just is what it is. This is literally out of the box settings. Um, the Ryzen 9s had their own copy of Windows just to make sure everything was installed properly with the drivers and provisioning, the provisioning and all that kind of stuff. But for some reason here, the Ryzen 7 and the Ryzen 5 were slightly faster. Next up, we have the Adobe Premiere result, again, based on the Puget Systems benchmark and the Ryzen 9 9950X sitting at the top of the graph, but again, not that much ahead of the 7950X. The 9900X actually posted a slightly slower score than the Ryzen 9 7900X here. Our final actual benchmark is the UL Procyon combined Photoshop and Lightroom test. So this one's for you photo editing guys out there. And we have the Ryzen 9 9950X Sitting at the top of the graph, followed closely again by the Ryzen 7 9700X, and then just a few points behind is the Ryzen 9 9900X. And again, you're not really seeing that much of an uplift here, about 500 points between the, uh, the 70, uh, 7950X and the 9950X, and uh, pretty much the same between the 7900X and the 9900X. So here we have our last graph and it is power consumption. So this is power from the wall with the CPU put under load in Cinebench's multi-core test. So that's stressing all cores and all threads. The 99, 9950X drawing a little more power than the 7950X while the Ryzen 9 9900X drawing about 30 or so watts less than the Ryzen 9 7900X. So, even in terms of efficiency here, things aren't significantly better. In fact, for the 9950X, um, it actually draws slightly more power than its predecessor. So what do we make of the Ryzen 9 9950X and the 9900X then? Well, I think overall we are in a, we're in a slightly better position than we were last week with the Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 9. But I still don't think that the performance here is earth shattering in most tests. So. I think we do have the argument being made to choose the Ryzen 9s over the previous generation. I think that case is relatively clear in most tests. But again, a lot will depend on what the pricing is like where you are in the world. So here in the UK, the, the situation may be slightly different compared to if you're in the US where most of you guys are from, uh, but also um, at other places in the world as well. So you're going to have to use that judgment call as to whether the price difference is small enough to... Um, to warrant or big enough to warrant going for the Ryzen 9 over the Ryzen 7 equivalent model for the Ryzen 9s that we've got here today. Sadly, the argument of upgrading from Ryzen 7 to Ryzen 9 is definitely not being here. There isn't pretty much any situation where you would want to choose Ryzen 9000, um, either of the Ryzen 9s that we've got here over their Ryzen 7000 series counterparts, which is what I think a lot of you are upset about, and rightly so, because that is kind of what we've come to expect from AMD. And uh, I did go into a lot more analysis and discussion about that point uh, earlier in the video. So if you didn't watch the introduction, do go and check it out because I sort of compare the changes that we saw between every single generation of Ryzen. But if you compare the difference between you know Ryzen 2000 to 3000, we obviously had a much, much higher performance um, through IPC and also because we had a massive core count uplift as well. Uh, we're not seeing anything like that here, but even between generations with similar core counts in previous generations, we're still not seeing that between Ryzen 7000 and 9000. So unfortunately here today, that uh, the case for buying Ryzen 9000 over 7000 still isn't being made. Um, the performance is better than what we saw last week, but it's still not earth shattering, as I mentioned. And the X3D models from the previous generation do still give these things a run for their money. They don't have it all their own way. I think there are some situations where these CPUs might be faster, but overall, the uh, obviously the uh, X3D CPUs being a lot cheaper uh, means that they are far better value for gamers as well. So 
Things might change in future. We'll have to see how things go because this has been a pretty messy CPU launch. Uh, things were obviously delayed to start with. We then had the issue of the uh, Intel microcode and uh, all the issues around the stability there. And then we had problems with these CPUs um, at launch as well. We had the issues last week. And then I had my own issues, which I'm, uh, I hopefully no one else has encountered them, but I'm, uh, I'm guessing people probably have that you just have to wait a long time for that memory training to kick in. You don't know whether the board is going to fire up or not. And also my own issues with the, um, the performance seemingly just dropping a little bit compared to all my test results that I got last week. So something happened there that I still haven't got to grips with and I'm going to do some more investigating, see if I can find out what it is. But I am confident in the results today being what you would see if you built systems based on these two Ryzen 9 CPUs right now. So that's it for me today. It's a bit of a complicated uh, one, but hopefully the story is fairly clear. It's not worth upgrading from Ryzen 7 to Ryzen 9, but you might in some situations want to consider Ryzen 9 over Ryzen 7. So that's it for me today. Don't forget to like and comment in the description below. Liking and commenting just helps punch me through, through the algorithm and gets me noticed. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel as well. It means a lot to have your support. And don't forget to turn on, turn on those notifications. And also, it, don't forget to check out the links in the description below because I've got all the links to the hardware that we've looked at today. Clicking on those links and buying the products just helps support the channel. And we've got lots of other ways to um, thank me for my content here and uh, such as buy me a coffee or using one of the other links below as well. So that's it for me here today. Thanks to AMD for sending the CPUs over and I'll be back very, very soon.